Well, I told the church that uh, to prepare with questions, so are there any other questions that you've all prepared? I have another one. If no, no. Well, I want a different person now, so I'm hoping for... Yes, Odessa. That's a very good question. Okay, so let's go to the book of Revelation chapter 1, please. That's a very good question. I always thought about that too. <laughs> Revelation chapter 1. Now you'll notice that the word spirit is capitalized when it says spirits. So this proves that there must be more than one Holy Spirit and uh, we're New Age doctrine right there, right? All right, so let's solve this thing. Let's look at Revelation chapter 1. And let's see what the Bible says. He also gives some interpretation right here. We're going to look at Revelation chapter 1, and then we will start at verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars, which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the what? Angels of the seven churches. And the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the what? Seven churches. Okay, now we're going to look at verse chapter 2, verse 1. Look at how this works. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. So there are seven stars, seven golden candlesticks. Now we're going to look how many times he mentions the spirit here. We're going to look at, first of all, verse 7. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Okay, that's one time. The capital Spirit speaks to the churches. Look at verse 11. Second candlestick, second church, second star angel. Verse 11. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Look at verse 17. Again the Spirit. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Look at verse 29. The fourth one was the same. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now look at chapter 3, verse 1. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven what? Spirits of God. Okay, that's a problem there. So we now see right here that in Revelation chapter 3, verse 1, let me put red right here so it can mark a problem. So this will be a great verse that you can use to uh, prove that there's not just one spirit, but that there are multiple spirits out there that we worship. Spirits. I mean, it's capitalized, right? It's capitalized, and it's plural form. And it says seven spirits. So we got a problem. Now, does this mean then that there are multiple gods? We're going to look at, uh, keep your hand right here at Revelation 3. We're going to look at the book of John chapter 4. John chapter 4. John chapter 4. And then we'll read verse 24. John chapter 4. We will read verse 24. Now notice what the Bible says right here concerning God. God is a what? Spirit. See that? So notice right here that God is only one spirit. He's not seven. Look at the book of Ephesians. Look at the book of Ephesians. Look at chapter 4. Chapter 4. Well, there are seven spirits. Uh, well, you know, you're going to have a problem then. Look at the book of Ephesians chapter 4. And we will read verse... Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 4. Ephesians 4.4. 4. Do you see that verse? What did, how many spirits are there in Ephesians 4.4? 4? Yeah. Did the Bible say, the Bible said one spirit to us, right? There's only one. There's not seven. Okay, so we got a problem here. Based on Ephesians 4.4 4 and the book of John chapter 4, there's only one God. Amen. There's no multiple gods. This ain't New Age stuff. We're not going to get into that batty, loony world, okay? Of the emergent church movement about many different spirits, gods, whatever, okay? There's only one spirit, one God that we worship. Not millions of God in India, etc. There's only one spirit. Now, the question is this, then. Why would it say seven spirits? 
we're going to look at the book of John, again, at the book of John, chapter 20. John chapter 20. Here's the answer. We're going to look at the book of John, chapter 20. Here's the idea here. You ready for this? If you look at Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3, why are there seven spirits? Because in chapter 2 and chapter 3, what's going on, we read the verses. Remember the church of Ephesus, right? And then he, the, what does the Spirit say to that church? The church of Pergamos, right? What does the Spirit say to that church? Church of Thyatira, what does the Spirit? And you'll see it seven times in all seven churches. Because why? There are seven candlesticks. And because there are seven candlesticks and seven stars, which represent seven angels, God is, is he only in one place or is he omnipresent? He's omnipresent. Isn't God inside you? Why, then we got millions of gods then, right? No, it's because God is omnipresent omnipresent, he can be anywhere, anytime, anybody, in multiple people. Because you got seven different multiple churches there, God the Holy Spirit is in all of them. There's your answer right there. It's not meaning multiple gods. Otherwise, how are you going to explain this one if you think I'm wrong? Look at John chapter 20. The Bible says right here in John chapter 20, and verse 17, Jesus, is Jesus God? Okay, good. Saith unto her, touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father, and to my what? God and your God. This is the, one of the favorite verses used by JWs. Now, I, don't, I never met a Jehovah Witness who used that verse yet. I know of some who would argue that. But hey, if you're a Jehovah Witness out there, I just gave you ammo. You can now use that, okay? So you see right here that in John chapter 20, Jesus is God. But you notice that he mentioned my God and your God. Why? Because the Father is God too. Yeah. You got to understand this. That's why people don't understand this. God, do you not think that he has the power to be in multiple places, anytime, anywhere? He can do that. He can split himself. You got to understand this. This is not hard to understand because us humans, we can split ourselves too. What do you mean, pastor? We've got body, soul, and spirit. Our body is in the grave, but our soul goes to heaven or hell. There is a Gene Kim who's lying in the grave, as well as a Gene Kim who will hopefully not be in hell. Gene Kim is up in heaven. See, so there are multiple things. So you got to realize this is that it's not saying that there are seven different, pers uh, seven different persons out there with seven different individualities, etc., stuff like that. This is referring to the same God. This is referring to the same spirit, but he can split himself into many other places, be anywhere, anytime, any place. Because God is inside you, and he couldn't do that unless what? He's everywhere. He can split. He can be everywhere inside you.